Greetings viewers, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're still talking about air conditioning systems. In the last video, the first video on AC, we did an AC service using the automated recovery machine. As most of you said in the comments, and as I full well know, 99.9% uh, .9 of you do not have access to nor own an AC recovery machine. Uh, you that want to do this kind of work at home, uh, most likely what you're gonna have, or basically the necessities you'll need to have, would be a good set of R134A manifold gauges, and also a standalone vacuum pump. A good standalone vacuum pump and a set of manifold gauges are basically all you really need to do air condition work. Um, but if you have a charge in your system and you need to vacuum it for a leak or anything else, you will have to recover it using a recovery machine. Uh, you're gonna have to go to a shop or someone you know that has one and have the system recovered. You cannot open the Schrader valves and you cannot just let the refrigerant go into the atmosphere. That is against the law, you cannot do that. So you do have to, if you want to do your own work, detecting leaks or recharging, you do have to pay someone to recover the system. That's just how it is, you know, you can't really get around that. So today's video, we've got the 2002 Outback five-speed manual, the $300 Outback. Uh, as I noted in the first video, the air conditioning does not work in the vehicle. I'm 99.9% .9 sure I already know what the issue is. It's one of the big issues for Subarus and air conditioning. So in this video, we're gonna go through, try to detect, locate the leak, uh, repair the leak, and then we're gonna go ahead and refill, uh, vacuum and refill the system using the manifold gauges and the standalone vacuum pump, along with small cans that you can get at your local parts store of 134. This is straight 134. This is not with any kind of stop leak additive or any kind of refrigerant uh, lubricant. It's just straight 134 canned. Uh, luckily for this application, this Outback, uh, the charge capacity is right at 25. Uh, actually, let's see, it's 21 to 25 ounces. These are 12 ounce cans. So two of these will make 24 ounces. Puts us right in spec. So luckily we don't have to do any measuring. We can just throw two cans in it and be good. So from here, we're gonna go ahead, and hook up the 134 recovery machine, uh, do a recovery on the system. I'm pretty sure it's empty, but we just wanna make sure before we start working on the system that it is fully empty and depleted. Uh, once we get that done, we're going to hook up the vacuum pump, hook up the regular manifold gauges, pull a vacuum on the system, uh, see if it will hold a vacuum. If not, uh, we'll go through and diagnose where our leak's from. So let's go ahead and get started. So on this Outback, as most Subarus, everything's pretty much laid out the exact same. Uh, from the early 90s all the way to current times, our high side hose connector here, H, big connector, low side back here, L, small connector. We'll go ahead and hook up the 134 machine. Again, pull the collar back, snap it on, quick release. And turn in your thumb screws to open the valve. Again, only turn it till you hear refrigerant uh, expelling. You do not want to crank down on these and damage your Schrader valves or bend your Schrader valves. Now see, it's a good thing we didn't just assume that this system was empty because the AC wasn't working. As you heard, there is a refrigerant charge in this system. It may be too low for the air conditioning system to activate, uh, but we don't know until we recover it and see exactly how much was in there. So we're gonna go ahead and start the recovery process now, and we'll be back when the recovery process is finished. All right, guys, and we're back. Our recovery has finished. Uh, there was only one-tenth of a pound in the system that was recovered. Uh, most likely that was residual 
uh, refrigerant pressure in the hoses from the machine sitting in the shop and being hot. Uh, so that was what we were hearing. It wasn't exactly uh, the charge coming out. It was uh, residual pressure in the system of vaporized uh, refrigerant and vaporized refrigerant uh, that had pressurized in the hoses. So the system is empty. Um, after the recovery is done, the machine automatically vacuums the system. Uh, so far, we are holding near perfect vacuum, so there may not be a leak in the system. The issue may be a leaking Schrader valve. So as we did in the last video, as I said, anytime you empty the system and you are diagnosing a leak or doing a service, you want to replace the AC Schrader valves. It's cheap insurance to make sure that you're not gonna develop a leak or that you don't have a leak that you cannot detect because you cannot detect the leaks at the Schrader valves uh, by pulling a vacuum on the system. It tests everything but those valves. The only way to really test those valves for a leak is to charge the system, have UV dye in it, and then look for the dye coming out of the valves. Uh, if it's bad enough, you can hear the refrigerant hissing and bubbling and boiling off of the valves or the third method would be to take an R134A refrigerant sniffer tool and uh, see if you can detect any leaking refrigerant from the Schrader valves there. So that's why I like to just go ahead and rule it out and go ahead and replace them. That way we know they're new and there's no issues with them. So we're gonna go ahead and crank these thumb screws off, pop these hoses off and replace those Schrader valves. Uh, hopefully I can get this video filmed uh, we've got some black clouds rolling in and thunder in the distance, so hopefully we can beat the rain and the storm. Now let's go ahead and pull both these Schrader valves. The thing with these Schrader valves, uh, one, you got to worry about someone, like I said, over tightening the fittings and bending the little valve. And two, they do have a little O-ring seal that can, with age, uh, you know, deteriorate and start to leak. So there's our high side Schrader. Sorry, on the last video, I did not show you guys the Schrader valves on camera. I'll try to, there we go. Try to get them up here so you can get a good look at them. Uh, some AC systems use Schrader valves similar to the valve core in your tires, uh, but as you see on the Subaru, they use these larger Schrader valves. And every vehicle manufacturer and AC system is different. Uh, like I said, some use the little tire size Schrader valve uh, valve cores. Some use these bigger ones. Some use even massiver ones than these. And uh, like on a GM, uh, especially uh, pickup trucks and SUVs, they're notorious for their high side Schrader valves leaking and uh, causing issue. But uh, those, you have to replace the entire fitting that the uh, hose goes on to. Uh, you can't just pull the core out of the, uh, out of the fitting. You have to replace the entire piece here, which requires a special socket and more specialty tools. Another thing that makes working on air conditioning and automobiles in general an expensive profession. All right, so our new Schrader valves are installed. We're going to turn the recovery machine off because we're not using it. Because as I said in this video, we're going to be using a set of manifold gauges and a manual vacuum pump. So we've opened up the system. It's a nice humid day here in the south, so moisture is in the system. So we got to go ahead and get these, uh, the manifold gauges hooked up ASAP and get the vacuum pump running so we can get that moisture out of the system. So we've got the high and the low side hooked up. We're gonna take the center yellow hose on the manifold gauge set. And we are gonna hook that to our port on our manual vacuum pump.
And we'll disconnect the 134 machine, hook up our manual vacuum pump. I say manual, but it's not manual, it's electric, but you know what I mean, standalone vacuum pump. And we'll go ahead and flip the switch. We'll open our valves up. Once the valves are opened up on the manifold gauge, you hear that the tone changed to the vacuum pump itself. These are the valves I opened up. So, as you hear, we're almost to perfect vacuum. The vacuum pump has uh, changed its tone. And we'll let that run for 10, 15 minutes. And uh, we will be back after about 10, 15 minutes of vacuuming the system. All right, so it's been about 12 minutes or so at this point of vacuuming. And we're gonna go ahead and close our valves off to the low and the high at the manifold. And we'll switch off our vacuum pump. And we'll just watch our gauges to make sure that they stay zero and we've got negative uh, 30 uh, inches of mercury vacuum here. So we're just gonna watch that and make sure that they do not rise back to zero. If so, that means we've got a leak somewhere and we need to find that leak before charging the system up. So I'll let that sit for a good five minutes or so, and then we'll get ready to recharge as thunder rolls in the background. All right, guys, we are back. Uh, hopefully I'll be able to show you all this. Um, it's a little bit much to see here, here and all while we're trying to video, but uh, we've got one of our R134A cans as I said, this is just straight 134. There is no uh, refrigerant oil, no dye, no stop leak in it. So what we wanna do, we've got a can tap on here. Uh, this is the preferred can tap I like to use. It's like a spigot on your, uh, for your garden hose. Uh, you turn it in, it pierces the can, turn it out, and it will allow refrigerant to flow out of the can and into this yellow. Um, charge hose here, vacuum hose, whichever you're doing at the time. Uh, we want to expel the air here. There's gonna be air in this line. So what we're gonna do is crack the can open, push the Schrader valve until a little bit of refrigerant comes out, just a hair, just to purge the air out of there. Once that's done, we'll go ahead and keep the high side shut. We'll open the low side and start filling the system. Uh, once the can gets empty, we'll close this off, close this off, change cans, again, purge the air out of the line and continue to charge. We'll turn the, uh, start the engine up, turn the AC to full blast to recirculate max AC uh, because we're gonna need it to, the compressor to draw the last can out, the last bit of refrigerant because our vacuum will mainly be depleted. So we'll have to have the compressor suck that last bit of refrigerant out of the can. So. We're gonna go ahead and crack this can open. Like I said, you just turn this in. You'll hear it pierce. As you hear it right there, it pierced the can. Now we're gonna crank it back out to open the valve so refrigerant will flow into the yellow hose. I'm gonna set that down for now. Now we're gonna take a screwdriver and depress this yellow, uh, the Schrader valve here, just so we bleed the air out of this. All right, and that's basically all we need to purge the air out of this line. We're ready to start uh, charging the air conditioning system. So I'm gonna go ahead and crack open our low pressure uh, valve here, and we'll be drawing our refrigerant up the yellow hose through the manifold here. You can see through the sight glass, the refrigerant as it flows in, and it'll be sucked via the vacuum into the low side of the system. As you hear, there it goes. Uh, you might not be able to see it on the sight glass on the video. Might need to move the camera, but uh, we are starting to charge, starting to flow refrigerant. Let this continue to fill. As you hear it coming out of the can. Shaking the can, heating the can, anything you can do will help expedite the process of pulling the refrigerant out of the can and through the manifold gauges. But again, it can only fill so fast this way. You don't have the recovery machine 
uh, forcing the refrigerant in in the same fashion. So I'm gonna keep going till this can empties out and then we'll start the second can. And once we start the second can, we'll probably go ahead and start the car up and get the AC system going. All right, so we've got about as much as I can get out of this can. It's not wanting to flow the whole can until we can switch. So we're probably gonna have to siphon or pull it in with the compressor. Uh, hopefully we've got enough charge to activate the AC compressor clutch, uh, but we will see as soon as we start it up. So that's what I'm gonna do now is go start the engine up, make sure we got the high side valve closed. I'll make sure we got it closed at the top. At the bottom, it doesn't really matter. We can still read pressures and we'll watch our pressures as we do this. So let's go ahead and start the engine up and turn the air condition on. Let's see what we got. All right, so our compressor did activate. We are starting to flow refrigerant now. Just a quick check, make sure both of our cooling fans are on, and they are. Can's gonna get cold as we deplete it, as that refrigerant moves through the system. Getting really frosty. You can see the condensation forming on it. I believe our can is reaching the bottom. I think we're about empty. Sounds like we are. We'll go ahead and shut the valve, remove the yellow hose. Uh, but before we do that, make sure you uh, close your uh, valve up here, you don't want refrigerant blowing back out of the system. Make sure you close both your valves on the manifold gauge set and uh, you will have a little bit of refrigerant in this line. So be careful of that when you go to take it loose. Bleed a little bit of that pressure out so it doesn't blow out in our face when we disconnect the can. All right. So now we'll take the can tap off of this can, put it on the second can and start feeding it into the AC system. So first can's empty. What I was talking about, these cans are sealed here at the top and that little needle, a little needle in here and it pierces the can. We'll go ahead and start our second can, put the tap on it. Sorry, I had the autofocus off. Go ahead and crank this on there. Crank this back on here. Same process, again, we'll pierce the can, back the valve open, and uh, purge this line, then we'll open up the low side again to draw the rest of the refrigerant charge into the system. the air out, a little bit of refrigerant. Go ahead and open up the low side again, full bore. We're gonna empty this second can and we will be to specification field on this system. It might take a little bit to get this second can to go in. May have to heat the can, like I said, get the pressure up on it. But uh, full spec is two full cans for this uh, AC system. Uh, old trick that uh, my shop teacher in technical school taught me uh, back in the day, especially easy on a four cylinder or V8 or V6 engine. Uh, they take the can and set it on the exhaust manifold to put a little heat in the can, raise the pressure in the can and help push the last little bit of refrigerant out of the can. There was a big old strike of lightning across the sky. Let's get this thing charged up and get this video wrapped up before I get struck out here. Just 
Shaky, shaky, shaky. You may need to raise the RPM of the engine, get the compressor spinning a little faster as well to draw this in. Getting to the bottom of the can now, getting light, freezing up, <laughs> freezing my hand. I think we about got her. All right, I believe our second can is empty now. So we should be fully charged. We're gonna go ahead, close our low side valve up. Go ahead and close our can tap again, purge the refrigerant. And remove our hose. Our pressures look good. Not seeing anything abnormal. No, indication of restrictions in the system or anything of that nature. So, there was a hair of uh, refrigerant left from that hiss, but very minimal amount. Still, as much as we got from the two cans into the system, we are at full specification. So, both our cans are in now, we are good. I'm gonna go inside the car. I've got the vent thermometer in the car. I actually brought it with me today and uh, we will check our vent temps. And so let's go inside and see how cold our air is. All right, guys, don't know if you can uh, make this out. Sorry for the wind noise, but we're about 42, around 40 degrees when I rev up the engine and get some air flowing through the condenser, the fan's going, well, we're not driving down the roads. So there's not really any extra air going through the condenser with the electric fans going. But uh, we're just above 40 degrees Fahrenheit at the vent. This feels very nice, especially since it was about 80 degrees a day here and uh, really humid. So it's nice sitting here in nice, cool air conditioning. Uh, so that basically does it for the procedure with the manifold gauges, cans, can taps, and a standalone vacuum pump. All right, guys, that's gonna do it for the day's video. I'm gonna have to cut it short. It is starting to rain on me now and the thunder and lightning is getting much closer. Uh, we didn't get to diagnose a leak in this video as we could not find one on this vehicle. I assume that uh, the reason the system was empty was because the Schrader valves had leaked over time. Uh, normally in Subarus, it's a very common issue for the O-rings at the two, uh, the high and low side lines where they go into the AC compressor. It's very, very common for those O-rings to leak, and that's where you lose your refrigerant charge. Uh, but we didn't have that in this case, or if we do, it's a very, very slight, slow leak. So most likely I'm gonna inject some dye in this system, uh, let it sit a little while, see if it maintains its charge, if it does not leak out, we will take the black light out and go over uh, checking for any dye, see if we can find the leak, if it does have those O-rings leaking. Uh, but that basically does it for the video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed, and I will see you in the next one.